recording on this computer. Welcome everyone to the JSIPFS Core Dev Team Weekly of February 19th. Uh, I'm David, I'll be the moderator for this session and Volker volunteered to be the note taker. Thank you so much, Volker. Uh, as usual, we try to keep these meetings really short and efficient. So let's just get into it. Um, I volunteered to be first this week and I want to start by giving my update uh, by posting there like directly my my update into the the path. So this is like a, a suggestion, a proposal. Instead of like having like a note taker trying to catch up everything that we say, let's just like prepare our update and just copy paste it and then walk others through it. And if there is questions, then we can answer questions. So from my end, well I've done a lot of CR merges and releases like there was a lot of PRs everywhere I, there's a lot of activity and so I, I spent some time reviewing code and also helping people finish their PRs and so a lot of time was spent there I fixed the fixtures issue on Azure right now we finally have like a more sane approach to load features on the fixtures on browser tests uh, there was a problem in JSAPFS API. Well I'll not explain more. Uh, I also solved the buffer chain problem in JSAPFS API it was actually a fake problem. It was not a problem from Buffer. Um, and I continue working on the new, the refactor version of WePeerToPeer. -peer. Uh, what I did this week, a part of that was getting PubSub as being a core primitive of WePeerToPeer -peer and making JSAPFS use it. And I also made Amplex an official thing. So instead of, of now using a fork that is a fork of a fork, uh, we actually just like, okay, this is a completely different thing from the original code. It, it solves a bunch of problems. Let's have a spec, which didn't exist before, and now it's all there. Uh, check it out. Um, this is not a breaking change, by the way. It's just like naming things, probably. Uh, and yeah, there were other bug fixes, um, but well, minor things everywhere. You can check that by going through the waffle board column on the DOM. I'm not blocked in anything, and for this week, I expect to ship Yes, I fast 028. A lot of people are asking for the features that are there and continue the leap peer to peer next endeavor. Um, and, and by the way, for the people that join this call for the first time, um, there is an issue about leap peer to peer next on just leap peer to peer, which lists all the things that need to happen. And also for the people that join this call for the first time, uh, we have instructions about we format this call on the first recording. Um, if you haven't seen that video, definitely check it out after. Cool, that's for me. Any questions? Anything? All, all good? Uh, David, I took yeah. a look at the new, the new spec, which is great for, um, for the uh, Muxa stuff. Um, I had a few comments on a couple of the algorithms are wrong that you wrote. Uh, interesting, okay. So I definitely saw your comments and I replied to a bunch of them. Maybe you have more. Oh, I haven't seen them yet. I just woke up at six in the morning. <laughs> oh, so you mean algorithms or just like the formatting? Oh, uh, the, uh, the three things on how to decode the bits is wrong. It has wrong names in it. Ah, wrong names. Okay, okay. Uh, I was wondering yeah. if you were claiming that the, how the multiplex works. No, out. no, 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 not at all. Got it. Yeah, the yeah, documentation yeah. is wrong. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, thank you so much for reviewing. Yeah, uh, yeah. I replied to the comments directly and good morning. Sorry for making. Okay. Because so I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm trying to get C sharp. Um, talking um all, all the P2P protocols, which is why I was looking at it. Sweet. Awesome. Awesome. Let me know if you. Can, okay. So, do you want to go next and just like talk about the things that you have done? Uh, what your post okay. and what? Yeah. Okay, uh, I, I spent last week and the week before looking at graceful stopping on Windows. Um, I think I have it all um, implemented, um, just waiting for the release, which has some um, problems with the IPS daemon. It needs the graceful stuff um, to get all the tests working. So, you know, as typical, waiting for uh, one project to be released before we can continue with another one. Um, also, I have a PR open up on the daemon to make things faster. 
instead of spawning the subcommandant um, three times and processes all over the place, just use one process. That's blocked until we get this other stuff going. Okay. And, okay. And you queried MDNS. Um, I I found one issue with the the other vendor's package, um, multicast DNS on restart. Uh, I've submitted a uh, when when a new network interface connection pops up, we we don't detect it, um, which we should. Uh, so I submitted it um, a few days ago. I'm waiting uh, to get an update from them. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. Uh, are you blocked on anything? Oh, well, basically just waiting for um, the new release of uh, JSIPFs. Because uh, that graceful stop stuff is also stopping that big um, 1103 which is um, Victor's thing on trying to get it all working on Jenkins. We need uh, that. Interesting. So is that the case, Victor? Like we cannot have that? Well, I, don't, I don't think it's blocked. Currently we're skipping those tasks, uh, which, which might actually be the case why we have the problem with removing the directory. I just saw Richard's comment that it might yeah. be that the daemon is not stopped properly, so the blocks cannot be removed, and that's why the test is Amen. We should look into that after after the call. So that's yeah. that's why I changed it to improc the bit swap test. That's why I changed it to improc demons. Mm -hmm. So avoid the problem on node, but that caused the problem on the browser that you found. <laughs> yeah, and the test was literally testing in browser nodes to an external uh, yeah. demon, and so we need to have that that way. Um, okay, cool. So. We can skip the tests to get the release done, and then we can then update IPFSD to use shit down instead, and then do another patch release yeah. on just IPFS yeah. with uh, those tests uh, enabled. Cool, 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 cool. Thank you so much. Um, on multicast DNS, so you found the issue, Graceful stuff. Yeah, I don't have any other questions. Any questions for Richard from anyone else? That's good. Okay, cool. Um, Peter, do you want to go next? Sure thing. I'm going yeah. to share my screen uh, because I also have something to share. Oh. Can, can, you, can you see the uh, Zoom now? Uh, yeah, I can see lines, diagonal lines. Ah, you cannot see actually something. Uh, now, now we see something. We see the crypt path. Oh, okay, okay. Then it's working. So the first thing that I've done, I've added monitoring or cloud instance, uh, which also means that we have now monitoring for WebSocket star and WebRTC star. Uh, so we can see the network traffic and we can see, let's see, uh, last two days maybe. So we can see how much re resources, but then I also added uh, the specific endpoints that we have for star signaling. So we can see exactly how many peers are connected to the different uh, different star services that I call them, I guess. So right now it looks like WebSocket star is a lot more popular than uh, WebRCC star. Mm -hmm. And then we can also see the statistics on how many dials they, they done. So WebRCC star, for example, has a lot more failed dials than uh, WebSocket star. And we can also see how many joins. So this is kind of like a basic monitoring. I, I thought I showed it off. That's excellent. Do you know how many the uh, different nodes get spawned? Uh, what do you mean? Oh, oh like, like you have a bunch of connects, but like a connect can be just a node disconnecting and connecting again. I, I'm interested to know how many different peer IDs do we see? Oh, I don't think we're logging that currently in okay. the, the exported stats. Yeah. But basically, if we export that with the Prometheus, then we can set up the dashboard to, to show this number. But this basically just takes the values that we added so far, but we can mm -hmm. make this better in the future. All I right. think this, this, this uh, metric here is just uh, just the number of peers that are currently connected, basically. OK. How many are there? 12,000? Uh, right now, nine to one store and two to WebRTC store. So okay. not a lot. Okay. Not a lot. Okay, interesting. But then we can uh, see the max value and, and so on. 
that that's good to know. Like uh, our friends from MetaMask have started like loading with peer to peer nodes on their uh, on a container inside the extension, and so multiple hundred nodes, more than thousands, are are using it. Uh, and I was curious if we saw that on our metrics. Mm. As as far as we can tell, they are not connected to the discovery .io. Maybe they have their own star signals deployed. Yeah, maybe they're pointing to somewhere else, somewhere else. Yeah, I'll so check them. Yeah, this is good to know. Um, so the second point is the CI work that we already talked about, basically. Um, just to get a view of how that looks. We now get this nice dashboard once we have this merge, but as you can see, there is still three platforms failing. And what's nice as well is that we can get this little view so you don't have to browse the logs, you get a, a parsed output. And we can oh, wow. see what tests are failing here. You click so you don't tests. Have to... You click tests. Yeah. Yeah, nice. and then you can see the changes as well. So in, in general, it's just a nice UI for yeah. quickly finding out why the tests are finding. Yeah, and, um, and like, I've been trying it out and like just seeing Jenkins just like fly through and, and like all the other stale, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Thank you so and much. it should be plenty, plenty of faster as well. I don't know if I can check out really quickly. We can see the Jenkins job take half an hour, which is long, and we need to make it faster. Uh, currently, we are not using all the the power we get from Jenkins because we cannot run the test in parallel. Uh, but then we have uh, Travis, which runs on 34 minutes. So basically, this time is not because we have not powerful machines. It's because we have a bunch of waiting stuff that we are running sequentially. We're basically yeah. not using the CPU that we have. Yeah, and um, that most of that we can shave that in half once we have the private key bits adjusted again. Um, uh, well, the the test the test has to have better isolation. Like right now, if you run multiple test cases, they will conflict uh, because of ports and connections and and bootstrap yeah. nodes and stuff like that that we have to fix. Yeah. Um, then the last point is of stuff I've been working on to kind of like refactor the test. It's kind of to help with the um, to help with the um, circuit tests, which are becoming very messy very quickly. So the basic idea is to end up with test cases that are very declarative compared to the current very imperative setup uh, style we have of the test. And once this is done, we can start implementing hopefully this elsewhere as well, but be able to change out the, the daemon factory and then do tests differently than how we're doing them. Right now. All right, so, so that you. is what I've been working on. That, that's cool. Th and thank you for showing the demos. Uh, things that you are blocked or that you are pointing to this week? Nothing. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm <laughs> planning to continue with the CI stuff. <laughs> um, the question. CI stuff and the, the testing, testing DSL. Uh, I also have a bunch of other things not related to JavaScript to do. Um, but hopefully, I'm, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty confident we will finish uh, integrating Jenkins into JS IPFS. And then we can basically push all the JavaScript requests should work with Jenkins at that point. And then we can start removing CI services, and that's it. And that also means that we can start testing on Windows again, because we can't use app there because of the 32-bit problem with Go. Mm -hmm. So they'll be really well, great sorry. from my point of view. The, the plan has always been to remove AppBayer and Travis and all the other CI services except Jenkins, because in Jenkins, we already have Windows support and OS X and Linux, plus yes, other platforms in the future as well. So I, I'm, I'm afraid like pushing the Go IPFS release faster uh, is not very possible from our side, and AppBayer is going to be deprecated for us mm -hmm. soon. So I don't think it's worth spending time on that right now. Yeah, and I know. Yeah, go ahead, Richard. Sorry, Victor, I agree with you. I think it would be great having Jenkins because now we can do Windows testing, <laughs> which has been a big problem. Yeah, yeah. Yep. All right, all right, cool. So uh, thank you, Victor, for the update. Uh, Volker, do you want to go next? 
Yes. All right. So um, I've been working on, so, well, it's basically news because I haven't really worked on it, but the Bitcoin and Zcash stuff is finally merged in JS IPLD. Um, that's pretty cool. And also, um, I've spent some work on upstream to fix the um, Ferros buffer implementation. So if you basically use the node buffers in the browser, um, I am kind of updated the tests for it and fixed some bugs so that they are, that they are now, again, compatible with the node implementation. One of most pull requests got merged. And this week, I will spend a bit of the time to move more tests to the new version, helping there. And I will work on the IPD selectors and also will make sure that the JS HTTP API um, for that one, the DAG comments start to work. And there's an old PR open and I will, I currently, currently um, fix it to make it uh, work with the current code base. Um, yeah, that's all I have. I'm, I'm not blocked on anything. Sweet, sweet. Yeah, lots of great updates. Uh, so VPR on for us buffer package got much. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Like it seems like things are going more smoothly. Um, yeah, and and yeah. it also it no based me. I think the the fourth for, fourth biggest contributor to the puffer stuff. <laughs> yeah, because of all the changes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit cheating, but still cool. <laughs> that, 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 that's great. <laughs> Not cheating. It's code. No lines of code. Um, cool, cool. Thank you so much, Walker. Uh, John, do you want to go next? Uh, you, your mic doesn't work. Uh, it's really loud there. Uh, yeah, if you want to type it. <laughs> Uh, say it again. <laughs> can you guys, is it too loud for you guys to... Uh, uh, I, we can understand you. We can understand okay. you. So, um, I, you know, haven't spent um, that much time with people have been uh, pretty busy for um, I'm also trying to figure out how much time I do want to spend on this part. Um, but, so some things that I, that did happen were, I think, uh, David merged the, um, uh, the version, some version flag that I added that And I also added a jar for a person in a LS call. Um, there's two PRs and in some because of the GFS API and the tests that um, are related to that. And I will be present right there. There were some tests that I commented on. They were failing in a GFS API, so just get through those. It is getting the um, yeah. It seems it's not just for me, John. It's getting harder to understand you. I think like you are putting yeah. your mic more and more away. So if, okay, you, okay. if you put it closer, it might work better. Try again. Okay, how's that? Yeah, that's for that's better. Okay, so um, yeah, so I have the one uh, one pair for adding our first plus directory, and uh, so this week I've been working on merging that. And uh, previously I thought about working on the kind of like speculative app so that you can add things without actually uh, to get the, the, you know, the hashes would be. Um, and uh, and then I need to figure out, but maybe I could work on something that has a higher priority um, and I might you know, uh, be able to look through the bottom board and see what's, what might be interesting. Yeah, exactly. So we, I can help you like finding those issues that are high priority or things that are also more interesting for you. Uh, I believe I answered your question on the GSIP Fest API PR uh, like 10 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago. So let me know if that helps you, if that clears, uh, answers your question. Um, yeah, like, you, as I said, like on the first call, I'm also available, like um, just like book my time. If you want to do some peer uh, pre-programming one day or just like go through multiple parts of the stack, 
to find areas where you want to like to contribute, um, and and we can like discuss multiple issues if you. Remember. Yeah, I'd be interested in that. Um, I also had some questions that were introduced with like the uh, in the uh, file system uh, versus uh, you know the non local um, and. So I, I understood that you have some questions about file system, yeah. and I, I missed the rest. <laughs> like mm -hmm. I didn't understand. Yeah, so uh, that might be something that uh, I'd like to talk to you about. Is the, it's I think I understand generally what they're supposed to do, but then the rest of the code it kind of contradicts uh, what I was expecting in some cases. And I'll make a comment on uh, something else uh, bits of that. But um, I can talk to you about that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's like have a, a chat more about these things, uh, and or just keep opening issues. Those are always welcome. Cool. Thank you so much for all the contributions, John. Like it's great. Like just seeing you keep pushing stuff. Um, so I just saw that like there we have a, a, a new person that joined, Anna. Uh, Anna, uh, are, are you still there? Are you just listening today? Do you want to? I'm still here, um, and I am just listening today. Okay, sounds good. No problem. Uh, and welcome. Good to be here. It's, good to, it's great to see you here. Um, cool. So, Machi, Machi, are you still around? Would you like to share uh, the update with us? Yes. Um, I was working on rewriting the module I made, the peer to peer node trust, mm -hmm. and it's now completely working. I've implemented all the changes and the private keys are no longer um, shared by other nodes. So it's now technically not illegal anymore because sharing private keys uh, of certificates is actually, I think, a bad thing at least. And um, yeah, it's now working. I would like to make it an official lib peer to peer module or move it in a lib peer to peer org. Is this something um, that uh can be done uh it can be done well, let's just like make sure we understand how that fits the stack because once it's an official like as long as it's pluggable into peer to peer it's an official module like uh we welcome every organization every group every team to like create peer to peer modules they don't need to be in the peer to peer org it's just like when there is something there it's a clear signal to tell everyone to use and so let's like understand those nuances about like even as you just said like you are not sure if sharing the private keys are is illegal, like it's a wrong thing to do or not. And I understand you already fixed that, but there might be other things that we probably should check in with Lars or Kyle because they they have a vast experience on that kind of system, and, and they will uh, help us understand if we are recommending users in the wrong path, or um, if we are actually providing a, a very useful and well documented service. So actually, I think um, that I have actually mo mostly solved everything and it should be now ready to use. Um, but if you don't know what the module does, basically it allows browsers to communicate over WebSocket star with um, random PC nodes without having to use P2P circuit to connect to them. So it's like web RTC, but less annoying. <laughs> but less annoying. Yeah, because you solve the HTTPS slash WebSocket secure problem because you yes. remove the, the need to set up that manually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and even like node trust can be used even for perhaps Go IPFS nodes, because there's a lot of folks that want to host their own Go IPFS node and they want their browser node to connect to it, but they it's not clear that they have to set up a reverse proxy on front, a TL, TLS termination uh, endpoint, and, and they could just use node trust as a solution. And so, um, well, back to the, the idea of this stand-up, is there anything that you are blocked uh, for this week? Um, yeah, so I have a bug connection, uh, get observed addresses, uh, returns an empty array for some reason. I had to um, hack it in so it uh, shows the IP as localhost um, to test it. And I don't know where that bug is coming from. I would have mm -hmm. to look at that. And I'm also blocked by the lib peer, peer next rewrite because um, the module needs to access the swarm. So I'm currently um, using a ZWOOP swarm function after the swarm is created. But that's uh, the hack that should be removed. Yeah, yeah, I saw the your your PR. Yeah, like I, I am working on it. Like I'll try to unblock you as soon as possible. It's, it's just like a lot of, like yeah. the, the next version is just like a lot of refactoring there. 
Um, the con dot get observer there says like, do you have any test or any issue that I can check out to see if I can help you? Um, so I don't know. I I think currently there is nothing to do besides adding tests and maybe testing things more. Um, yeah. Or maybe providing a test server on libpeerpeer.io, that would be great for testing if the DNS works with protocol labs, uh, servers and stuff. Got it. Okay. Cool. Cool. So, by the way, like one of the alternatives when we cannot create a test that reproduces the error uh, is, again, setting up just like some time to enter in pair programming mode. Like we, me and Victor did this in the beginning of last year and i think it worked very well when we were when last year we were in sprint mode and like we would just like spend an hour or sometimes even just 20 minutes of screen share and just like going through things together and there was a lot of knowledge that got transferred because of that and also like you see the button right like it, the other person that doesn't have to tell you that you have to like do all of these steps to set up the thing he can just show you and so uh, matchy if you want to set up like 20 minutes um on my calendar just like to walk me through like the steps and like what you're doing so that i can see and and try to debug it with you let's do it more than happy to yeah all right two minutes to the end of the call oh, sorry you were going to say something um no i would i would uh, i just wanted to say that um that's a great opportunity you give me and yeah that's all um awesome. yeah. yeah 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 and it's always fun uh, to hack on things together and all right so I didn't miss anyone right we we went like we had updates from everyone well the, oh let's just like check out Dimitri's notes so Dimitri has been doing the the key size like so adding the feature of like selecting the key size for IPFS DCTL and he's going to continue focusing on cir circuit test interrupts and the tutorial uh, I know that he's working on Rob on making a tutorial to explain users how to use way peer to peer circuit. Cool. Uh, yeah, so normal question. Does everyone feel that they know uh, that what they should, should be working this week? Oh, we have a question from Booker. Uh, just something for n next week because I think it worked pretty well that because everyone has put his own n n notes to the hackpad. And it's super convenient because I didn't actually do anything. So um, yeah. I think we should basically for next week, we should already like as soon as the URL for the meeting is online, every should put in his, yeah, his three points of what he's done, he or she is done. Um, and yeah, put it in there. And this make the meeting way smoother also for the note taker. And my question is, uh, do we normally do a recording? Because this week, again, we haven't done one. We, we are recording. We are? Yeah. It, it, okay. Like it should tell you on the top left. Ah, corner, like that is, because I thought it's, it does it. Okay, cool. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we've Good. been recording every week, and I upload it to the IPFS channel. Yeah. Uh, All right. cool. And also, I put the link. So, uh, but anyway, let's, I totally agree with your suggestion. Let's update the template so that like, it's obvious every week that we should um, insert our updates before even start talking. Yeah, and I, I will update the temple later. Awesome, thank you so much. Okay, so yeah, uh, before we disband, I just want to make sure and like answer any qu last questions. Does everyone feel like they have a clear direction for this week? They know what they should be working at? Well, I, I guess me and John have to sync up on like issues, but, but that's also an action item, so. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, I don't see any hands or any people speaking. Yeah, um, Go ahead, John. Uh, so the issue that we have to coordinate these meetings is that we're every, every week we'll add a new, a new comment on the uh, GSW issue. I imagine that over time that could be like, if I'm really lucky, yes. But um, also, if there's a new issue posted every week, and maybe uh, new people who are just like, browsing the channel might see that there's a new uh, meeting. Yeah, I, I think that's right. Uh, we should avoid having like pages of comments so, uh, and we should like shift to a normal, like just create an issue per week. Um, I know that like the IPFS helper bot has been having some problems. And so that's why I haven't like 
spend a lot of time trying to get that working. And, and so I'm hoping that once those problems are fixed for the regular IPFS LMs, we can just reuse that bot to also create our call. Um, and so probably this is a note for you, Victor, which you are probably going to pay a little bit of attention to that this week. If you can make the IPFS bot helper agnostic, not just to the IPFS LMs, but any kind of call, that, like for IPLD, for dynamic data, for just IPFS, et cetera, that would be great. Yeah, that makes sense. Sweet. Yeah, cool. All right. Thank you so much for your time. Have a great week. See you on the interwebs. And let's ship just IPFS 028 this week. I'll be writing the highlights tomorrow and ask everyone to review and then. Cool. Cool. Have a great yeah. day, week, morning. Bye. 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 <laughs> Bye. Bye.